Slitherfangs are definitely one of the toughest machines in Forbidden West, and not only do you have to confront them multiple times during quests, but their earth grinders are required for many gear upgrades, so you'll also need to hunt quite a few Slitherfangs in the wild. And that can be a bit taunting once you realize just how many earth grinders you need. But don't worry, in this video I'll show you a method for taking down Slitherfangs that could be done even with just blue rarity gear, and you'll be able to get all three earth grinders pretty much every time. We'll also cover some more advanced tactics in case you're further in the game and trying to deal with the Apex variant or just looking for the most efficient way to farm Slitherfang components, so let's get started. So while Slitherfangs certainly have multiple powerful attacks, I find what makes them most challenging is simply how fast they are and how much they move around. It's much more difficult to line up shots on a Slitherfang's components and weak points compared to most machines. And of course, the earth grinders we're after are located on the Slitherfang's upper neck close to its head, which is one of the harder locations to hit. On top of their challenging movement, Slitherfangs also have some powerful attacks that can be very difficult to dodge, like the lightning strikes from its tail. So so, we need to know how to deal with these attacks and the Slitherfang's excessive movement, and at the same time, we want to make sure we get those earth grinders. First, we need a way to temporarily immobilize the Slitherfang so we can remove those earth grinders more easily. Now, my preferred method of immobilizing machines is typically to shock them, but Slitherfangs are highly resistant to shock. They do have a couple of concealed sparker canisters that can pop out of their chest if you remove the protective plates, but this is quite difficult to do, again, because the Slitherfang moves so much. Tying down a Slitherfang with ropes can work, but this is really really only effective once you have the purple elite rope caster from Thornmarsh later in the game, and I want to give you guys a strategy that doesn't depend on having high level gear, so we won't use that for now. With shock and ropes off the table, that really only leaves us with one mechanic we can use to immobilize the Slitherfang, knockdown. Knockdown can occur randomly when dealing damage and stuns large machines for about 12 seconds, but it can also be triggered in more intentional ways. The best way I've found to trigger a knockdown is by using weapons with ammo that deal damage over time, like shredders and drill spikes, and equipping knockdown power coils. Out of the two, drill spikes are more effective since they deal so many ticks of damage over time and each tick has a chance to trigger a knockdown. I'll be using a level 3 scalding spike thrower equipped with a single 10% knockdown power coil for the demo in a minute. You can buy this one from the regular hunter merchant at the arena, but if you can, I would highly suggest using either the purple vindicator spike thrower which you can get by completing the rain trace salvage contracts, or the blue spine thorn spike thrower which is a reward for completing the signal spike quest. These will trigger a knockdown much more quickly. So our first step with the Slitherfang is to pepper it with drill spikes to trigger a knockdown as fast as possible. Once we have the Slitherfang stunned, we need to be ready to tear off those precious earth grinders. Now, if you're in the end game, I highly recommend using the Death Seeker Shadow to tear these off with a few advanced hunter arrows. If you don't have the Death Seeker yet, then tear precision arrows on the Glow Blast Sharp Shot Bow will also work well. However, to keep things as low level as possible, I'll be using tear precision arrows on a fully upgraded Cleaving Sharp Shot Bow equipped with a few 10% tear damage coils. Now, there's a bit of a technique to removing the earth grinder efficiently with Terror Blast arrows. You actually don't want to hit the earth grinders directly. Instead, you want to aim your first shot at this gap between the two lower earth grinders so it blasts them off from behind. Then, you immediately want to land another one right next to the third small earth grinder to tear it off. Remember that overdrawing your shots will increase tear damage. After a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get all three earth grinders off during a single knockdown. If you don't get all three off in one go, then you want to start peppering the Slitherfang with drill spikes again as soon as it gets up to trigger another knockdown. Repeat this as many times as you need to harvest all the earth grinders. Okay, so now that we've secured the earth grinders, we just need to finish the Slitherfang off. To do this, we're going to take advantage of the Slitherfang's weakness to frost. If you have the legendary Sun Scourge, then I would totally use that to freeze the Slitherfang. The best purple rarity options would be the Seeker Hunter Bow or Rampart Blastling. For blue rarity options, we have the Frost Hunter Bow and Ice Fire Blastling. I'll be using a level 1 Ice Fire Blastling equipped with a single 7% frost coil. However, keep in mind if you want to conserve resources, specifically machine muscle, then you'll want to use a bow. Getting the Slitherfang frozen is relatively easy with the blast sling. My tip here is to aim for the lower part of its body that stays on the ground. This is a much easier target than the head and neck, and the pooling frost will help freeze the Slitherfang faster. If you're using a bow, I would still recommend aiming for the lower body since it's a much easier target. With the Slitherfang frozen, we now need a quick way to knock its health down. My favorite method is to use the sustained burst weapon technique on a bolt blaster immediately after freezing it. Again, you'll want to aim for the Slitherfang's lower body here to make sure you don't miss a bunch of shots. Of course, the best bolt blaster is the legendary Blast Forge, but for the demo, I'll just be using a level 3 Plasma Bolt Blaster equipped with a 7% impact damage coil. You can buy this one in Scalding Spear, but basically you just want to use the highest impact damage bolts you can get your hands on. Now, after you've unloaded a full sustained burst, it can be a bit difficult to reload for another round with the Slitherfang's constant attacks. Until you get really comfortable with its attack patterns, I'd recommend switching back to Drill Spikes after using the Bolt Blaster. Drill Spikes on the Brittle Slitherfang will deal damage very quickly. Just remember to start freezing again as soon as it loses the Brittle 
status. Of course, there's lots of other ways you could deal damage while it's frozen as well. For example, you could launch off a few throws with the splitting spike weapon technique if you have it unlocked. Or you could use a warrior bow with the spread shot weapon technique, or launch off brace shots with your sharp shot bow to explode components like the metal bite and purge water sacks. However, I prefer the drill spikes because they can trigger more knockdowns, which will give me a chance to reload my bolt blaster and do another sustained burst. Okay, so that's the strategy, but we still need to discuss how to avoid the Slitherfang's various attacks. As with all machines, the biggest challenge here is learning the Slitherfang's attack patterns. If you pay close attention while fighting one, you'll notice certain body positions and sounds that indicate a particular attack is imminent. For example, this sound means it's about to lunge. Once you know an attack is coming, the best method for avoiding it is by using a slide dodge combination. Instead of just doing a simple dodge roll by hitting circle, you can avoid damage much more effectively by first sliding and then rolling at the end of the slide. This combination maximizes the distance you can cover and the invincibility frames you get. To slide, you need to first be running and then hit square. Aloy can slide for quite a long distance and you can extend it a bit by throwing in a dodge at the end. Remember to hit square again at the very end or jump to come out of the crouch by hitting X. I also recommend turning on the auto sprint setting so you can trigger a slide more easily. The slide dodge is the best way to avoid the Slitherfang's lightning attacks that have a huge area of effect. To time it correctly, you'll want to wait until you actually see the shock blast go off and then do the slide dodge to avoid the shock tendrils traveling along the ground. I find that it helps to make sure I'm not moving directly left or right because a shock tendril always seems to line up with Aloy's original position. Try to move a little forward or backwards while you dodge to avoid the tendril. It's also worth noting that you can actually interrupt the lightning blast attack if you hit the Slitherfang as it's charging it up. Other attacks like the Slitherfang lunging and swiping its tail can be avoided the same way, or you can use a simple dodge if you can time it well. For the Acid and Purge Water spray attacks, it's best to wait until they're just about to swipe by you and then dodge through them in the opposite direction. When the Slitherfang dives underground, you simply need to keep moving around to prevent being hit when it emerges. Okay, I know we just covered a lot, so let's put it all together and take a look at the live combat. But first, I just want to remind you guys that if you enjoy these machine hunting guides, leaving a like would be a great way to let me know that, and it really does help out small channels like mine. All right, guys, so I didn't show you before, so I'll just show you really quick now. Um, I'm using the Nora Sentinel outfit, fully upgraded with two just a blue and a green melee defense. So nothing crazy here in terms of the outfit. And I'll show you that I'm on very hard difficulty level and aim assist is on default. So I'm going to start with my drill spikes on the scalding spike thrower. And we're just going to land as many as we can really quick into him. Well, he doesn't really notice just yet. And we're hoping that we can trigger our knockdown here pretty quickly. There we go. So I'm going to immediately go to my cleaving sharp shot bow and aim for this gap between the lower two earth grinders. And I'm going to draw another one right away and get it right next to that last earth grinder. And then I'm going to start freezing him right away. So we have the earth grinders off. That's awesome. Um, sometimes it'll take a little bit longer to trigger the knockdown, but if you're really on it with those spikes and you just keep going and shooting as many off as you can right away, especially with the Vindicator or Spine Thorn spike throwers, um, you'll be able to do that pretty quick. Okay, so we froze them, so I'm going to go for a sustained burst on my Bolt Blaster right away. Aim for the lower body so I don't miss anything. And now I'm going to go back to Drill Spikes. Here's an example of the slide dodge. So we actually triggered another knockdown, which is nice. So I'm going to actually just land more drill spikes on him. Um, we could do a splitting spike if we wanted to. But he's unfrozen now, so I'm going to go back to freezing him. I'll try to get... So those you want to dodge through them, basically, right before they cross your path. Here's another one. Oh, well, it got interrupted because we froze him. So back to the drill spikes. Okay, he's going underground, so basically we just want to keep moving while he's doing this. We can even land spikes on him. We can aim well enough for it. There we go. He's out, so I'm just going to keep getting spikes on him. There, we knocked him down again, so I'm actually going to take that opportunity to do another sustain burst. And we actually blew up the metal bite sack. And acid acts a little bit like frost, increases damage. 
So while he's fro while he's um corroding, I'll just keep landing drill spikes on him. And he's almost dead. There we go. As you guys can see, those drill spikes are key for triggering the knockdown state and making it very easy to remove the earth grinders. The spine thorn and vindicator spike throwers will trigger the knockdown even more easily. After that, it's all about keeping the slitherfang frozen and dealing damage with the bolt blaster and spikes. The slitherfang's attacks are definitely difficult to avoid, especially the lightning strikes from the tail, so don't get too frustrated if you're taking a lot of damage. Practice with the intention of learning the various body positions and sounds that warn of an attack, and I promise you'll learn to anticipate them faster than you think. If you get crushed, drenched, or coated in acid, remember you can drink a cleansing potion to clear all status effects. Now let's talk about the Apex variant. On top of having much more health and dealing more damage with its attacks, the Apex variant is also resistant to freeze. However, I still think the most effective strategy is to use the freeze sustain burst combo. It's just going to require a powerful frost weapon like the Sun Scourge to pull it off. To make it a bit easier, I'd recommend destroying the Purge Water Sack with a Brace Shot first to remove the Slitherfang's frost resistance. On higher difficulties, this will require a powerful Sharp Shot bow though. And keep in mind that the Slitherfang can actually swap Purge Water and Metal Bite between the sacks on its front and back randomly, so you may have to wait for it to move the Purge Water to the sack you want to target. If you're just after the Apex Heart, then don't bother removing the Earth Grinders, just keep freezing and using Sustained Burst on your Bolt Blaster. Now both variants of the Slitherfang are also weak to Fire and Plasma. Don't bother trying to use Fire, unfortunately it's very weak in almost every scenario in Forbidden West. As for Plasma, it will depend a lot on your difficulty level. Machine Health increases with difficulty level, and on harder difficulty difficulty levels, Plasma is just too weak for me to recommend using it. However, if you're playing on normal or a lower difficulty, then Plasma could be useful, at least against regular Slitherfangs. If you want to know more about Plasma, I'll link my Elements video below. I also want to leave you guys with a few other tactics to consider while fighting Slitherfangs. Even though both Slitherfang variants are highly resistant to shock, the shock shredders on the Ancestor's Return Shredder Gauntlet are so powerful that they can be effective even on higher difficulty levels. Piercing shredders on the Iron Eater, Piercing, and Thunderbolt Shredder Gauntlets can also work well because they can penetrate through the Slitherfang's armor plates to deal damage. As I mentioned earlier, using knockdown power coils on a Shredder Gauntlet can be a good way to trigger a knockdown on the Slitherfang. It's not as effective as drill spikes, but Shredder ammo is extremely resource efficient, so it's worth considering this for the end game when you're trying to conserve resources. I'll link my Shredder Gauntlet video below in case you're interested in learning how to use Shredders more effectively. You can also make use of Valor Surges while fighting Slitherfangs. I would suggest Range Masters, since it will boost all of your damage dealt with ranged weapons like the Spike Thrower. You could also consider Part Breaker to help you remove the earth grinders if you're having trouble dealing enough tear damage. Power shots and critical boosts can also be helpful depending on which weapon you want to use to deal raw damage. I'll also link my Valor Surge video below in case you want to learn about those. Alright guys, that's my master machine hunting guide for Slitherfangs. Slitherfangs are definitely one of the tougher machines to deal with in Forbidden West, but they're pretty much unavoidable between showing up in quests and needing to farm their earth grinders for gear upgrades. So I hope this guide gives you the confidence to go take down some Slitherfangs and get those upgrade resources. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned something, Thing, leaving a like really does help. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.